does have two ill people, okay? One is diagnosed with cancer, whilst the other one is diagnosed with major depressive disorder. Just like the person with cancer did not choose to have cancer, so did the person who is depressed. When a person is first diagnosed with a physical illness, people around them would become overly supportive, tell them to rest and take their time in recovery. However, I assume you all believe this isn't necessarily the case with someone who is diagnosed with a mental illness. Let's say a relative of a, depressed, of a depressed person senses that something isn't right with their behavior. Their, their reaction would often be to get out of bed and suck it up. Now, if this was told to the person who has cancer, they would eventually die as they are not receiving any treatment. So why isn't this the case with mental illnesses if they can also be fatal? I mean, most of the deaths around the world today are due to depression. This could be um, because of the stigma societies have placed around mental health. And because of this, people diagnosed with mental, Ill mental disorders avoid seeking help. And as they don't want anyone, including the psychiatrist who is a complete stranger to them, to know about their thoughts and behavior. As a result, they will continue living with their disorder without, see without seeking any medical help as a person with a physical illness would. So when I was thinking about the impact of innovation nowadays, I immediately thought of artificial intelligence, since our whole lives mainly depend on technology nowadays. And because um, artificial intelligence is just like any other invention out there that aims to help and facilitate people's lives, um, that aims to help and facilitate people's lives, I thought that, well, how can they relate to mental disorders? And I thought that artificial intelligence has a very similar objective to medicine, which is, again, to help people as much as they can. So when I associated mental disorders with artificial intelligence, I asked myself, do we really need the human mind to understand the human mind? What if one day you had to go to a psychiatrist, and instead of describing your thoughts and behavior to um, a human one, you're describing them to a computer instead? Artificial intelligence is becoming much more advanced and prevalent each year, and indeed, it has shown to play a major role in medical advancements. If they um, continue growing at the rate they are growing at, is it possible that they could replace human psychiatrists? And if they did, would no limitations occur and would the world just become a happy place? If given an opportunity, robotics can understand, learn, perceive, and um, complete human activities on their own. In short, artificial intelligence has the potential to mimic human character or human behavior. The nature of human behavior is complex, sometimes illogical, and difficult to understand, right? I'm talking about all those physical actions and observable emotions that never seem to clear out the whys and hows of our behavior. This is where psychology comes into play. Here, tons and tons of data are gathered to gain insights into human behavior. If it were for humans to process all that data, it would result in errors, and which in turn could lead to wrong conclusions. However, with the emergence of artificial intelligence, gaining accurate insights has become child's play. Psychiatry is very different compared to the other specialties in medicine because it relies on both subjective and objective symptoms in order to establish a diagnosis and prescribe the patient with the correct treatment. However, psychiatry is trying to become much more objective each year. I mean, there are various classification systems that have been published all over the globe, um, as well as a synthesis of biological treatments such as antidepressants. Therefore, however, I still believe that a huge part of psychiatry still um, relies on subjective symptoms because it requires a patient to describe certain events to the doctor and answer the psychiatrist's questions. In addition, symptoms of specific disorders have been shown to differ amongst cultures. And for this reason, I believe that subjectivity is a very important role in psychiatry. Um, for instance, in the book Crazy Like Us by Ethan Waters, he describes how the symptoms of anorexia nervosa in American and Chinese cultures, for example, differ widely from each other. In Western cultures, symptoms of this disorder include excessive exercise, extreme dieting, fat phobia, not realizing they are immensely underweight and not wanting to become better. In contrast, Chinese anorexics often claim that they feel bloated, have no appetite, and um, 
they realize that they are severely underweight and have a strong desire to become better. In fact, most of the symptoms described by, anorexic patient, by Chinese anorexic patients are due to a traumatic event that has happened to them. For instance, a father shoving food into his daughter's mouth um, because he was depressed, overworking, and, and afraid that he isn't providing the necessities for his family led to his daughter's death after she became anorexic and stated that she lacked no appetite because food only reminded her of her father's abuse and violence towards her. Now, imagine if human psychiatrists were replaced by computers. Would that be more advantageous? Many people would believe so because it would mean that diagnosis is more objective and the rate of mental disorders could potentially decrease. I mean, at the end of the day, a psychiatrist is just like a human, and is a human, just like any one of us in here. And they carry their own biases and stereotypes as they come from different cultures, backgrounds, and ethnicities, all of which affect diagnosis. And um, so artificial intelligence contains a very elaborate and intricate program. However, and if you think about it, artificial intelligence and computers aren't just made knowing how to diagnose patients. Right? I mean, all of these programs are, at the end, created by humans. So, is artificial intelligence really artificial? And if computers were to be replaced by human psychiatrists, would no limitations occur? And um, would, would that mean that um, treatment is absolutely accurate and reliable? Now, there are a few advantages of replacing computers with human psychiatrists. First is their enhanced content. Computers, um, they, well, they can contain more than just text, and they can include um, exercises, videos, images, and so on, which, it, which could all um, be much more effective in treating mental disorders. Second is their evolving content. Let's say um, treatment and theories regarding mental disorders have been discovered. And, of course, after they've discovered and they've shown to have a great impact, they are often published. And, however, let's say a treatment or an improvement for a treatment has been discovered. It is very difficult to go back and modify these theories, especially if they have been published in books. However, if treatment was taking place in the presence of a computer, then going back and modifying or improving a certain treatment would not be, any, would not, um, be difficult. And third is the computer's unlimited scalability. Unlike doctors, there is no particular number of patients a computer can, has to see per day, as everything is contained online, and this means that patients could be treated simultaneously. <clears throat> However, when I was thinking about the implications and advantages of artificial intelligence, I realized one thing that they potentially cannot do, and that is the inability to experience emotions. Emotions again, is very important in diagnosing a mentally ill patient. And I believe that subjectivity is a crucial, plays a very crucial role in treating a, mental, a mentally ill person. So your, emotion, your, your brain gets information from two different sources. Your senses tells you what's going on in the real world, whilst your emotions exist inside of you to tell you what those circumstances and events mean to you. Now, yes, artificial intelligence is very, um, it's very, it has a very elaborate and detailed program, but can they experience emotions the same way humans do? So, yeah, like I said, um, your, your brain uh, has these senses to detect everything that's important to you. So, for example, just as hunger motivates you to find food, emotions exist inside of you to tell you what these events and circumstances mean to you that, ulti that ultimately promote survival and reproduction. <clears throat> that ultimately promote survival and reproduction. Now, um, our brain Many people would think that the human brain, yes, it is very complex. However, really, all our emotions that exist inside of us, they're just caused by a series of neurotransmitters and other chemicals, all produced by the brain, that activate different parts of the body and make us act and think in a certain way. Um, so if you think about it, um, 
artificial intelligence, they don't have a brain like we do. In fact, most forms of artificial intelligence don't even have a body. Now, it is true that artificial intelligent devices can learn in a similar way humans do, but that doesn't mean that they have emotions. Emotions drive action. This is their purpose. When a computer is given a stimulus through its senses, it checks its memory, and then it, pre and the, it checks its memory, and then according to that program, it corresponds to what has sensed and remembered. After that, it produces a predictable outcome. So this sounds much similar to a human that's adjusting and adjusting their behavior and learning, right? So if you realize, when, the, when an artificial intelligent device is given a stimulus, it, the whole program doesn't necessarily change, but what changes is the data and information. Now this sounds much related to a human to a human brain, right? So if you think about it, the human brain doesn't change, but what changes is our psyche as we experience multiple events and create memories throughout our lives. Despite all of this, there are many people who fear artificial intelligence because of how much they can learn and become more advanced, making them assume that artificial intelligent devices will become equivalent and superior to humans, leading to the extinction of the human species or at least make us seem boring compared to them, almost like having no purpose in life anymore. Will, will computers ever be as effective as human psychiatrists? This question is still debatable, as each one of us has their own thoughts and perspectives. In my opinion, I think it is safe to say that computers won't be replacing human psychiatrists anytime soon. Because, and I also believe that humans are still needed in, um, specifically in psychiatry because at the end of the day, all these treatment programs are created by humans, which also means that they can include what they believe to be rational and irrational. However, I also believe that psychiatrists need to develop new methods of treatment, which could include computerized therapy. Um, because one of the primary ways to reduce mental illnesses around the world is to be able to reach a wider audience. Now, there are many reasons why mental disorders are becoming, are increasing um, each year in various countries. However, the main reasons are first, in, in poor countries, it, a one-to-one -one therapy session is expensive. And so maybe by implementing computerized therapy, they would be able to afford it as it is cheaper. Second, um, even in well-developed countries, um, access to mental health treatments is qu quite difficult because maybe it might not be available, or again, it is still very, very expensive. And so, Maybe, um, now all of this could be due to cultural, religious, and ethnic reasons, whereby it may be considered a taboo to report a, about a mental disorder. And third, is that it might be the mental, mentally ill person, him or herself. So they might feel embarrassed to talk about their emotions and thoughts, and because of this, they would keep what they're going through by themselves. However, if they were to speak to a computer, then they might feel more comfortable as, you know, they don't have to speak to a person who they've never met and seen before. Significant challenges still lie ahead, including clinical, technological, cultural, and social issues. However, there is little doubt that computerized systems will play a role in the future of psychotherapy and minimize the stigma around mental health. Thank you.